Fur here, I'm here to do my May TBR. I love May because it is middle grade May on the TBR and Beyond reading group. I know officially it really falls in March, but we do our challenge in May and I love this challenge so much. It's a team challenge, which means you're trying to work with a team to win and I love it. This year I'm the Percy Jackson team, which if you have been following my channel for any length of time, you know how much I love Percy Jackson. I love the Rick Riordan present authors, and I'm really hopeful to include some of their books on this list as well. So this TBR is probably going to be split into a couple of parts like normal. I don't know if I'm going to do Fablin this month. We will see. I definitely have to read at least one fantasy book, which I think is going to be easy, a sequel, and a 300-page book for sure. But we will see how it all shakes out. So, the first book I need to read is Read a Middle Grade Book with Illustrations. So, I'm going to pick up um, Alcatraz vs. the Evil Librarians by Brandon Sanderson. And it does have illustrations, which is the thing. I think I started reading this because I had to read it for, like, I got, like, an e-arc of it. And it's, I could only read it on my Kindle. But it is, like, a five-book series. And I don't know much about it. Other than, it's like Limity, Snicket, and Superheroes rolled into one. So, I'm excited. I really do love Brandon Sanderson's writing style, so hopefully I will really enjoy this. So, this is the first book I am going to add to this TBR. The book we are going to chat about is I have to read a middle grade graphic novel, which I'm actually excited about because I have a lot of physical books that are potentially going to be on this TBR. I'm doing it as we're talking, so I don't know what it's going to look like. But I am going to do Wizards of Mickey volume one the graphic novel and this is just one that I saw at comic-con just few bookish publishers that were there so I picked this up because I wanted to come home with some books and I am really excited it seems a sorceress steals a powerful magic crystal from the ancient wizard Nectus apprentice Mickey Mouse travels to the capital city of Brainhaven to reclaim it before Nerys realizes it's gone the search leads to a grand sorceress tournament in which he enters with two young Wizards, he meets along the way, Goofy and Donald Duck. Little does he know, far more sinister plot is unfolding in the shadows of the competition. That sounds great. I recently went to Disney, and I went on a lot of, like, these rides. So I'm really excited it, excited to read this. It is definitely on the longer side of a graphic novel. It's, like, 262 pages. But I'm excited. Um, I would, I don't even know if Avatar counts as middle grade, technically. So I could also read Avatar, but... I have had this since October, so I think I'm going to pick this one up as well. The next prompt I need to do is I need to read a middle grade with a one-word title. Ooh, I have the perfect one. I'm on an ARC tour for 12th, which is like a middle grade book about 12th night, like a production of it. So I'm going to do that. So here is a photo of that one. Oh, I'm actually on a vlog tour for this, but it's called 12th, and it's like a middle grade graphic novel about theater. And I will be very honest, May always reminds me of show season, and this will be the third year that we haven't done a show. We didn't do one in 2020, clearly because of the pandemic. We didn't do one last year because we were remote, um, and, you know, we, we were remote and we didn't have, it just, it was a weird year. And this year we also didn't do one because things were changing so much. So it will be nice to just read a book that has to do with a show, and it's just, it makes me miss doing that, like... My first year of teaching, that show I did was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. But I'm I'm missing the elements of that. So reading a book about acting it will be great and putting up a show. There's also, an, like, there's a, they're, they're trying to find a diamond. It takes place at a summer camp. I worked at two different, very prevalent and very, very popular theater summer camps in my past. So I'm really excited to read this book. And it has a lot of elements that I'm going to enjoy. So this is one that's definitely on my TBR and I have to read it soon. Because I am on a blog tour for it. Um, and then the next one is read a middle grade book by an Asian or Pacific Islander author. I actually have a couple of options for this. So I'm going to go choose the one that seems the most interesting to me. Kind of go for different prompts. But the one I'm going to specifically try to read for this prompt is Winnie Zhang Unleashes a Legend by Kat Zhao. I have read, did I, I think I read something else by this author. I can't remember what else it was. I think I, I think I may, I, I, I have a couple of books by this author, but this one is an epic series opener inspired by Chinese mythology, perfect for fans of Stormrunner, Arusha, and the End of Time. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Anything that has mythology and is 
pitch is being reminiscent of like the Rick Riordan present series. I'm really excited for. It's also a little bit on the shorter side, but I'm really hopeful that I will like this and it has a really, really pretty cover. So this is the one that I'm going to choose for that prompt. And I also got it recently. And because I'm heading to ALA soon, I've got to read my arcs before I get some new ones. Prompt is read a creepy or spooky middle grade. And I do have some physical books on my shelf, but I also do want to have an even balance of reading some e arcs. So I'm going to read Dark Waters. Darkest Waters or Dark Waters by Catherine Applegate, which is the third book in that series. Everyone has to do with a season. This, is a, this I think, is the summer one, I think. But I really did like the other two. I'm going to see if maybe I can get the audiobook of this, see if it exists. But here is a picture. Long, so I really have no excuse that I haven't read it. But it does seem like it is tis the season, so I'm really excited for that. Um, and then the next book is read a middle grade fantasy i have so many options so let me go try to find one what i chose for this one is a the feels guide to the supernatural universe by allison noel this is like an, another eerie creepy fantasy story but it does have to do with ghosts it has a male lead which you don't ever really get i keep saying that and like people are like they they exist i know but they just don't come across my path very often um, and I am from the Percy Jackson generation and the HP generation, so. Um, but this is about a boy named Max. He believes, he, he, he assumes that everyone else has seen ghosts, but because he's, like, seen as a prankster, he's trying to, like, put that in his past. But when he gets sent to live with his grandfather, um, becoming normal is impossible because here in Glimmerville, everything is magic has gathered about and he's and his grandfather is a renowned field guide that helps contain all the knowledge for defeating creatures and it just sounds great i'm really excited for this one again it's another shorter one but i've been reading such long books in april i'm excited for some shorter reads and again a male lead i'm really excited for this one and hope that i enjoy it prompt is read a book that has like a colorful cover so I'm going to read Sal and Gabby Fix the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. This is also like um, a sequel to a series that I have to keep going. It's also a Rick Riordan Presents series. And I honestly can't do Middle Grade May without reading one of those. It will feel a little bit weird. And I did like this book a lot. So I would like to read the sequel. And I think it will be perfect. And it does have a lot of colors on it. Um, the other book I had for this prompt, I will just use for a different one. But I'm going to pick Sal and Gabby Fix the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. And hopefully I'll really like it. It, it also is science fiction, and I haven't read a whole lot of science fiction this year. So I think that will help me, like, balance myself out, which is really, really good. Um, and then the next prompt is read a middle grade recommends. So I have to go look at the prompt and see. This might be the only one that I probably get an audiobook for because I don't think I have any ones, but we could, I could be wrong. I could have one on my shelf, so we will see. But I think I'm going to read this one for that prompt and go find another one for the other one. So I will be back when I choose what's the next book I'm going to read. Books I did wind up reading, but I did find one that I unhauled a bit ago. Actually, I might still have a physical copy, but I think I'm just going to grab the audiobook and it's Winter House by Ben Gunderson. So here's a photo. It's about a girl. She gets shipped off to this mansion by her aunt, and they have a library, and in the library they have this book about puzzles. It sounds right up my alley. I'm really excited. It reminds me a little bit of the Mysterious Benedict Society, which I did enjoy. The TV show I also really enjoyed. So this is going to be my next read. And then the next one is read a middle grade book with an animal on the cover. So I have to do some investigating and try to find one, but I will report back. I'll be back. Another one that I've had since ALA, and because I'm going back, I want to try to read some more of them so I can get some new arcs, but I, well, I'm going to pick up The Unadoptables by Hannah Took. This has a couple of animals. It has a little, um, a little owl, and it has a little cat, um, and it's about these four twins, Milo, Ig, Loda, Sam, and Ben. They spent their entire lives at an orphanage when they finally get the chance to leave. Their hope for is cut short when they uncover supposed adoption and nefarious plans for them. And they have to go on an adventure to protect themselves. So I'm really excited for this one. It's definitely probably one of the longer reads that I have, but I tend to read middle grade pretty quickly. So this is the next one that I am going to add to my physical TBR. 
And then the next book is I need to read a middle, read a book by a middle grade author that is new to you. So I have a couple of options. So I think for this one, because I have a few of them, I'm going to read Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor by Zed J. Zhao. This is the author of Iron Widow, but it is another like Chinese mythology story. And I'm really excited for this one as well. It actually really works well with the other one because the covers just really work well. But I'm going to pick this one up for a book by a middle grade author that is new to me. So this will be the other one that I'm going to add to my TBR as well. As a reader, I'm always a little bit extra. So there are some bonus prompts that I am going to try to do. So the next one is read a 2022 middle, middle grade release. So I'm going to pick up Wild Sea Witch by Marty Dumas. And this is like a black girl magic story. I'm really excited. It's a social media loving tween, an ultra elite witch school, a literal black, literal black girl magic combined in this charming new middle grade series for fans of School of Good and Evil and Amari and the Knight Brothers. Meanwhile, this cover is so stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. So yeah, so this will be my read for that. Now I have to write a shorter one that's like under 300 pages. And I don't know what I, what, what I have left on my TBR because I pretty much cleared out all my newer middle grades. So I'm going to have to go hunt on my other shelves, which might take me a few minutes, but I will report back. So the book I was able to find is The Mirror Wood by Devin Fagan. This is like literally just under 300 pages. It's like 291. So it's really not that long, but it's another magical story. It's about a girl named Fable. Um, this, this place named Fable has been cursed with the blight. Um, and this girl has to go and sort of save her woods. I'm really excited for this one. I love books about, like, mystical woods, especially reading it in the springtime, because I think that they're perfect reads. So, yeah, this is the last book for that challenge, and then you have, like, a bunch of other, like, little prompts. I just dropped my book. Um, that don't have to do, like, with actual reading, but, like, one is watch an animated film and post a picture, read outside and post a picture, color your team's coloring page, um, post a picture of your current middle grade read and extra points for posting it on Instagram with the TBR hashtag. So all of these I'm definitely going to do. I'm going to edit to my bullet journal so I do not forget. So I'm going to go do that. And then I'm going to sort of figure out what the rest of my TBR is going to look like. I have to do, I want to do a couple of my other challenges like the fable and stuff, but I think I'm just going to focus on that and I'm just going to pick some reads that I'm really excited to read. I got some mail recently. Um, and I have some group reads that I'm really excited for. I have to pick an adult fantasy book. So I'm going to go figure all that out. And then I will report back. I tend to burn out if I read all of one genre. And I do have a little bit of diversity in this. I am going to throw some other books on my TBR cart. Just so that like it's not just all middle grade. Because I will get burned out. So I have a couple of group reads for the same group. But one is The Bone Shard's Daughter by Andrea Stewart. Which is going to be my adult fantasy read and I'm excited I might actually start to read this a little bit early I might start to pick this up tomorrow just so I will have a little bit of it read um it is a bit of a beast so I don't know how much progress I will make and I honestly read it but I was super distracted after work did not have the best day today so I think I'm probably going to restart this at some point tomorrow and another one that is on one of those like group reads is the girl that fell beneath the sea by Axie O and this is another like I think this is, let's see, I feel like it's like, yeah, I think it's, she, she, she's Korean American, so I think this is inspired by her heritage, which I'm really excited for. So these are two group books that I'm thrilled for, and hopefully I'll get to read them, and it will be a nice way to break up the, um, all of the middle grade books that I'm going to read. Um, and I also just picked up a copy of With and Without You by Emily Weberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. So this is just a pure contemporary. And I have a co-worker that I know likes these books. So if I can read this before I head to summer break, that will be great. So this is another one that I am going to add to that TBR. And hopefully it gets read. I really liked all their other books. So, um, And then just to sort of add some true crime to me, I am going to put Homicide in Halo Halo and poor aunties and a funeral on this because these are super short and as I've said in my previous TBR the month of April I read a lot of longer books so having these to break up the middle grade might actually be a good idea I read these both last year the first books and really love them and then the last book I'm going to toss on here just because I recently got a copy is The Fairest Kind of Love by Crystal Ciceri and this is the final book in the Windy City Magic series 
Again, it's a series conclusion, which I'm really, really bad at doing, but I just picked it up. I do also have an audiobook for this one, so if I decide to pick up the audiobook, I do have it, but my friend did give me this, and I really do like the series. So that is my tentative TBR. Again, I sort of deviated a little bit and didn't do my TBR game because of the challenges from the TBR and Beyond Reading Group. I know that those challenges will take up a majority of my TBR. Also, nonfiction read. I am going to try to finish John's Green. I have it actually right over here. Um, the Antecedent Review. I've been really doing very, very bad in my nonfiction reading this year. I haven't been doing a very good job, so I want to make some headway on that. But alas, that is my TBR plans. Let me know what some of your May reading plans are. I know stuff will happen. I know things will go awry. But that is my TBR. I'll talk to you guys for my next video. Bye, friends.